You're not hitting two gigahertz. No one's hitting two gigahertz on Vega 64 or 56. It's not happening. They're not hitting 1928 megahertz. They're not hitting 1948 megahertz. They're probably not hitting 1800 megahertz. But keep, people keep reporting this. And the reason is because there's a bug in the reporting for the software. But if you stop and think about it for a second, the cards are not hitting two gigahertz. That's 400 megahertz higher or 500 than what they ship at. Don't you think AMD would have added a little bit more to the clock if that were so easily possible? Before that, this coverage is brought to you by CableMod. Already well known for their work in custom sleeved power supply cables, CableMod is now venturing into liquid cooler tube sleeving with their new AIO sleeving kits compatible with Corsair and NZXT as of now. Check the link in the description below for more information. We're gonna demonstrate that even with a 200% power offset and with 380 watts going to a Vega 56, which is by default capped to 300, even under those circumstances, we're not gonna hit these high insane numbers on clock and hopefully show once and for all what the clock bug is in the current drivers. Okay, so we're gonna do a demo of this clock bug in action, and if there's background noise, I'm sorry, there are a bunch of really high RPM fans hooked up to this video card, which is under a 360 millimeter radiator. So here's our workload. It's frozen, but it's still engaging. We're currently reading 1312 megahertz stock, which who knows if that's accurate. And then we can go down to here. This happens whether or not you have the special offset we do, even if it's 50%, same bug. So we're at 242% offset. We're pushing 300 something watts through the card right now. And then let's just go ahead and go straight to the frequency stuff. So we're reading 1590 megahertz, right? That's because we've offset the power by 242%. So it's no longer power choking, which was limiting us to 13, whatever it was. So that looks cool. But then what if we do something like set a, uh, we can use any one of these tools. They'll all produce the same bug. Let's first set voltage. I'm going to use watt tool for that. So let's, uh, we might as well just type in 1200 everywhere. 1200 and then watt tool. I'm going to go ahead and type in 1200. And on watt tool, we also have 1622 for DPM six and seven. And before anyone says, Hey, but you also need to change DPMs one through five. No, that's not how it works. Uh, with custom mode on only six and seven are active. So no. So we've set that to 1622 with 1.2 volts. It looks like it's applied. We're not, we haven't crashed and this still works so okay that's cool our overclock's really good i guess what if we uh what if we overclock this thing to something crazy like 1780 megahertz maybe it'll just crash instantly nope still working and this says 1782 megahertz on gpu core this says 1782 megahertz this says 1782 megahertz everything thinks for 1782 megahertz so you can see why people would be tricked by this it's not really their fault Although you should think about it a bit because it really kind of becomes obvious once you start hitting numbers like, you know what, 1800 is not high enough to prove a point. We do 1880. It's another 100 megahertz over what we just did. This is this must be a card that was binned really well because we're at 1882 megahertz, 1882. Everywhere it says 1882. You know what, what's the max? What if we type in 2000 megahertz, two gigahertz? It looks like it might be 1882. I think we can go higher, 1980, there you go. 1980. Okay, you know what? Here we're going for two gigahertz. Yep. Wow. Look at that. Two gigahertz, and it doesn't even flinch. It almost looks like the frame rate hasn't even improved. That's weird. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because it's bugged. So this is all wrong. Everything is incorrect. If you encounter this bug, what you need to do is reset everything, and then redo it until you get to a point where the performance stops improving. So rather than doing what I'm doing here in the background, which is pretty normal for overclocking, you kind of find your ballpark by running an application on loop and waiting for it to crash. Rather than waiting for a driver crash, because they won't, what you need to do is actually kill this and then keep running Firestrike or whatever software you use, keep running it over and over and just enable the graphics score test and see if it improved or not. So let me show you what I came up with earlier because I, I did this in advance to save us some time. So earlier we came up with the numbers down here, when we were at a 9% core offset, a 980 megahertz HBM, we got a graphic score of 22,659. To give you perspective, our absolute stock score, zero changes whatsoever. Out of box, 56, no special cooler, no special power hack, 18,892 points. Add 50% power to that, no other changes, 20,769 points. That's a 10% improvement. 
Stock HBM at 950, 21,660. HBM 950 with a 9% overclock, 22,228. You can see the scaling here. We're at 2.6% over the previous number. And we settled at 22,659 with a 980 overclock on the HBM and 9% on the core. Well, we did our mod here and started thinking, I, I wonder how far we can push this thing. First thing you try, 1780 megahertz. Oh, wow, that looks like it worked. What's our score, though? 23,460. And our previous high score was 22,659. You can see how that would be a bit deflating if you get those numbers after doing all that effort on the mod because it comes out to be a difference of 3.5%. And that's jumping from whatever the 9% offset is, it's hard to tell that, to 20 to the 1780 megahertz clock. Okay, so there, there's where we are right now. Now let's say we increase this eventually to, you can see where I've kind of marked things, we eventually got to 25,000 score, which sounds really damn good. That's a huge improvement. But Firestrike started outputting in grayscale, and the score was going up because it was bugging out. So it was actually kind of a fake score. Speaking with Buildzoid, when he did time spy testing, he was getting missing geometry, he was getting items in display cases not showing up anymore, and the scores will look better because there's stuff not being rendered. So that's either some kind of bug in the culling or a bug in the drivers or something going wrong. Obviously, it's not a stable overclock, though. So let's look at the highest numbers we did. 1980 megahertz, 990 megahertz HBM2. We know 990 is stable on HBM2, and it actually seems to be real. But 1980 on the core, well, that sounds unrealistic. In fact, I just told you it was unrealistic a moment ago. So 23,707 versus our previous score of 22,659 is an improvement of 4.6%. That improvement is not because we went to 2 gigahertz. It's because we went whatever couple dozen megahertz over, maybe even 100 megahertz, over the previous overclock. In fact, if we look at... 23,707 and the percent scaling of that versus the alleged 1780 megahertz, which had a score of 23,460, we're at a difference of 1%, which is within test variance of Firestrike. Well within it, in fact, because it varies like 100 points sometimes in these runs alone. More than that, depending on what you're doing. So if we're at 1% difference, going from 1.78 gigahertz to 1.98 gigahertz, that's a 200 megahertz change. And that comes out to about an 11% increase in clock for a 1% increase in score. Doesn't that sound wrong? That's why this is a problem. So it's a clock bug. And really all it comes down to is you need to run a test here, just like I was doing with all these numbers, every time you change the clock and see if it increased. If it didn't increase reasonably, then you've encountered the bug and it's time to revert back to the last known score that actually provided a reasonable increase. In fact, if you do this enough, it's possible that you run into scenarios where your highest clock, so-called, is actually performing worse than the previous clock to the point where, if you look down here, I eventually reset to 1500 over 990 and saw that there was no score decrease and found out another bug, which was that afterburner wasn't adjusting DPM-6. It was only adjusting DPM-7. So if that's happening, then you've got another problem, and you need to reset everything or go into Wattman, which was more reliable, although still produced the same bug, where at 1,500 alleged megahertz, we we're hitting a score that was the same as our 1,780 megahertz score. And then we rebooted, did it all again with Wattman, and 1,500 megahertz, 990 HPM, we're still hitting 22,800 points, which is like the same as 90% of these other scores. So you can see the bug. That's what's going on with this situation and the clocking on Vega. It's it, all the software is lying to you. Hopefully the drivers fix it. Maybe the software needs updates, but definitely the drivers need updates anyway because overclocking is kind of buggy. And it's a bit of a process to do it, but just be aware of these issues and you'll be fine. As far as people reporting that they're hitting 1900 plus megahertz on the clock, which some reviews have done, those are wrong, and this is why. So, I think that adequately explains the issue. So that's the Vega clock bug. Basically, if you wanna validate your overclocks right now, you should do it the way Andy was suggesting that we do it before we posted our review, which is validate based on performance. That means that you wanna run your game benchmark, or Firestrike, or TimeSpy, or whatever it is, 
run that before overclocking, run it after each overclock interval, log the performance, and then run another overclock interval and log that performance. If you see an improvement in performance, it means that the overclock is working and that the clock is still actually increasing and not just lying to you. If you see that it stagnates or even drops below stock in performance, then you've encountered this frequency bug. And if that's the case, you should basically just reset everything and go back to the last clock that was successful, at which point you'll have a functional overclock with software that is probably still lying to you, but is lying to you in a way that isn't dragging your clock down below whatever stock may be. So that's what we're looking at right now for the clock bug. This should be fixed at some point. AMD has been aware of it since we were working on the review for Vega 56, at least, if not before then. Buildzoid, I believe, has talked about it in his 50-minute long rant about Vega. So we're just trying to bring some attention to this because we keep seeing people report numbers that they've overclocked the card to 2 gigahertz, and everyone's like, that's amazing. Why is there only a 14% performance increase? Because it didn't actually go to 2 gigahertz. So I think that's it for this one. As always, patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out directly. Links in the description below to other related content. And you can go to gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.